This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. I'll tell you, Annapolis has a problem on their hands right now. They've had two shootings of two teenagers in two nights. Let's start with the one that just happened last night. The Annapolis Police Department is investigating a second shooting in the Annapolis Gardens community right off of Admiral Drive. Now, this is the same neighborhood as the shooting on Monday night that claimed the life of a 14-year-old teenager. Details are just coming in on this one, but a 17-year-old male was taken last night to the R. Adams County Shock Trauma Center with serious injuries by ambulance. Now, this was done by ground after gunfire broke out in the 200 block of Kroll Drive in the Annapolis Gardens community. This is a developing story. We will have more information on this a little bit later on today, so you do want to check in with ionanapolis.net for that. But the shooting and murder on Monday evening, that happened at about 10.30 p.m. Annapolis police responded to the 1800 block of Bowman Court for a shooting. The 14-year-old, who was identified as Cameron Wallace, was transported to a local hospital where he ultimately died of his injuries. Police are actively investigating this, and they're asking people to call 410-260-3439 with any information that you might have. Now, we also have heard that these shootings may be related to some turf wars between communities. And as we know more, we will make sure to let you know so you want to keep checking in on that. The county executive for Anne Arundel County does not have gas. How's that for a lead-in? Well, actually, county executive is looking to have electric. Yesterday, County Executive Pittman said that he directed the Office of Central Services to begin converting the county's fleet of over 1,600 vehicles to fully electric models. The memo calls for immediate replacement of conventional vehicles with more efficient models where possible and a long-range effort to identify what's needed to convert the entire fleet within the next 15 years. Now, the fleet will gradually be converted as vehicles are being replaced with hybrid, plug-in electric, and ultimately all-electric models. By 2032, all non-emergency light and medium-duty vehicles will be converted, and by 2037, all light and medium-duty emergency vehicles will be all-electric. The heavier emergency vehicles like the fire trucks, ambulances, the ambulance bus, the emergency operations truck, etc., they will all remain gas or diesel. And the county's environmental policy director, Matt Johnson, said governments all across the world are beginning to electrify their fleets in an effort to reduce maintenance costs and greenhouse gas emissions. The transportation sector is quickly moving toward full electrification. And with this new initiative, Anne Arundel County will be a part of that exciting transformation. Kind of cool. I saw at the electric vehicle showcase about a year and a half ago, I saw a big old BG&E sponsored commuter bus that was all electric. It was pretty neat. Last night, we released a bonus podcast, and I was speaking with Dr. Michael Friedman from Evolve Direct Primary Care about the whole COVID situation. Right now, Governor Hogan has us in stage two, and County Executive Pittman and Health Officer Dr. Colin Ironman have rolled us back a little bit as far as our opening goes. And we got on the phone with Dr. Friedman and discussed it. We talked about what went wrong with the COVID fight, what went right, if the schools made the right decision, and in a perfect world, what needs to be done to eradicate the virus. We did look at leadership from Washington, D.C. on down, and we even discussed how Governor Hogan is doing as he's trying to chase the virus from Maryland. You want to make sure you give that one a listen. Pretty interesting. And actually, if you have the stomach for it, Dr. Friedman tells us exactly what's needed to really get this thing under control. And finally, as we wrap up, this was supposed to be the best story of the day. But unfortunately, I learned that the subject of the story passed away yesterday afternoon. Mo Gabba, you probably know him from 105.7 The Fan. You may know him as a friend of Trey Mancini or Chris Davis. You may know him as the kid that read from a Braille card to announce the Ravens' fourth round draft pick, number 123, Ben Powers from the University of Oklahoma. Yesterday afternoon, the Baltimore Orioles did announce that Mo was going to be inducted into the Orioles Hall of Fame as the second ever recipient of the Wild Billy Hagee Award. That award was established in 2007 and named after William Wild Bill Hagee to identify fans who have inspired others and their devotion to the team and demonstrated an exceptional commitment to support the Orioles. Hagee, who died in 2007, was the only other recipient. 
Mo lost his eyesight due to a malignant tumor at just nine months old, and he had battled five different battles with cancer through his short life. What kept him, his fans, and his family going was his infectious laughter and his enthusiasm. He hooked up with Trey Mancini in 2018 at the All-Star break, and Mancini actually credits Mo with helping him break him out of his slump for the second half of the season. Prior to learning to the death, but after learning about the induction into the Hall of Fame, Mancini said there is no one more deserving of this incredible honor than Mo. Throughout his battles with cancer, Mo never lost his kind spirit, his sense of humor, his love of the Orioles, his tremendous courage and unwavering positivity in the face of such challenging circumstances. This has made him an inspiration to me and so many others. It is fitting that Mo will now have a place in the Orioles Hall of Fame alongside some of the most iconic figures in franchise history. And for him to be honored as the recipient of the Wild Bill Hagee Award is truly special. Mo was mourned by both the Orioles and the Ravens on their social media accounts. And he was a graduate of Lindale Middle School. He graduated in 2019 and was looking forward to being a freshman at Glen Burnie High this September. Our hearts are a little bit broken today. Our thoughts and our prayers do go out to his family. We'll miss you, Mo Gava. Okay, that does wrap it up for us today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day for updates to these stories and more. I know we will have an update on that shooting on Kroll Drive. If you're someplace you can leave a rating or a review, please do that and let your friends and family and colleagues know how to get a hold of us as well. Other than that, please hang tight. We've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. He's coming up in just one minute. But first... We need to hear from Rick Peters from Solar Energy Services. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But while solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010 and it's been paid off for almost five years and i no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years if i waited for cheaper solar i'd still be paying an electric bill at solar energy services we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait so what are you waiting for sunshine's a wasted call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net sunshine sunshine Nothing else can make me feel so fine. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Wednesday, July 29th. More heat and humidity yesterday for the Annapolis region, which has been the theme for July through 28 days so far as temps are 3 to 5 or maybe even 6 degrees above average for the month to date. And today and tomorrow will be hot ones as well, with temps 89 to 95 degrees across all of Anne Arundel County, with heat index values 95 to 105 degrees each day with a small chance of p.m. storms tomorrow, followed by a daily chance of showers and storms Friday through the weekend as temps drop back just a few degrees into the 86 to 92 degree range to close out July and kick off August this weekend. And looking ahead to next week, the expectation is for more mid 80s to low 90s Monday and Tuesday with a chance of PM showers and storms each day. And we'll also want to keep an eye on the progression of what will likely become tropical storm or possibly even Hurricane Isaias, as it could potentially pose some sort of threat to the U.S. East Coast next week. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there. Stay healthy and be safe, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and use our website each day at dmvweather.com, so you can always stay weather-informed. The SPCA of Anne Arundel County invites you to take the plunge challenge. Post a picture or video on social media of your pet cooling off in the Severn River or your kiddie pool, maybe the Quiet Waters Doggy Beach, wherever, is the hashtag Take the Plunge Challenge. Donate if you can and share with your friends. This summer, the SPCA Puppy Plunge goes virtual so you can still help care and find homes for surrendered cats and dogs. For details, go to aacspca.org. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. 
And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.